When driving under normal circumstances, you should always keep at least 2-3 to three seconds between yourself and the vehicle in front. Under slippery conditions, you should keep at least 3-4 to four seconds or more depending on how slippery it is. You should also keep 3-4 to four seconds when driving behind vulnerable users like motorcyclists for example. Why measure safe distances in seconds instead of meters? Because seconds are relative to speed, while meters are absolute. For example, when driving in the city at 50 km an hour, 3 seconds is 42 meters, which is enough. But when driving on the freeway at 100 km an hour, 3 seconds is 84 meters, which is double the distance since you're going twice as fast. And how do you figure out that distance? You take a reference point, that panel for example. When the vehicle in front of you passes under it, you start counting. 0, 1, 2, 3. Now just a side note, let's get something straight right away. There is a very common misconception with everybody, not only beginner drivers, when counting seconds. When you want to count a certain number of seconds, for example 3, if you start counting at 1 and end at 3, 1, 2, 3, that's not 3 seconds, that's 2 seconds. From 1 to 2 is the first second and from 2 to 3 is the second one. So if you want to count 3 seconds and you stop counting at 3, you need to start counting at 0. 0, 1, 2, 3. Just like when you count seconds with a stopwatch, it starts at 0. In some countries, on the freeway, you'll have brackets painted on the asphalt and you'll need to see at least two of them between you and the vehicle in front. That is if you're driving at the speed limit. When stopping behind vehicles, at stops or red lights for example, you should always leave enough distance so that you can see the back wheels of the vehicle in front completely. If stopping behind large vehicles, like trucks or buses, leave at least the distance of a vehicle between you and them. Now these tips are for when you're following other vehicles. If someone is following you and they're too close behind, well, you can't control their actions. But what you can do, if you get the chance, is to move to the side and let them pass you. They're happy. You're happy, everybody's happy. Another big mistake students make very frequently when turning right where there are obstacles like this is that they start turning the steering wheel way too early and they almost hit the obstacle. If you start turning while you still see the obstacle in front of you, you'll risk hitting it. So what you should do is to start turning when the obstacle is more or less aligned with your mirror. In other words, keep your car and your wheels straight until the obstacle is more or less aligned with your mirror. Here I'm turning right past this can so I start turning my steering wheel after the can is aligned with my mirror. Here I'm parking past this obstacle, same thing, align the mirror, then I turn the wheel. I'm about to turn right at the next intersection and there are some posts there. I stop, do my verifications and I start turning my wheel when the post is aligned with my mirror. Now you should try to keep at least a distance of about 1 meter between you and the obstacle when turning. 1 meter is more or less half the width of a normal sized car. The closer you are to the obstacle, the more you'll need to advance before turning. For example, here I'm at a distance of about 1 meter from the wall, so I can start turning my steering wheel as soon as I see the edge of the wall past my mirror. If I'm at half that distance, I only start turning the wheel when I see the edge of the wall more or less in the middle of my window. If I'm very close to the wall, I only start turning the wheel when I see the edge of the wall towards the right of the window. By the way, you should never be this close to anything when turning, unless you have no other choice. The minimal distance you should always try to keep is at least 1 meter. In the next video, I'll discuss distances from parked vehicles, cyclists and pedestrians, and driving on narrow streets. And in another future video, how to judge your distance from the curb when turning right. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.